everyone. If you are um, trying to get an audition for Virginia uh, or Virginia Orchestra audition, uh, this is the one of the requirements for the violins, and it's a Rode Caprice number no. five, Moderato. Unlike some of the years that uh, music starts from the beginning, this uh, D major song. That's the beginning with a melody, but we start from the E minor. So it's very interesting that we start from the middle. But anyway, so because of that, uh, middle section is always a stormy section. So we want to have a very powerful, um, darker sound. And this piece is very uh, rhythmical. Even though there's a long quarter notes with a grace notes at the beginning, then the tied notes goes into six toplets. So often the first tied note becomes too long. So ta 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 ta. -ta. So the six toplets becomes uh, four notes. So you want to practice like that. So the, those patterns go back and forth. So it's very important that we have the clear mind of what the tide note sounds like. And also, the tricky thing is that the bow becomes opposite direction. So that's okay, but then here, so we have this slur on the dots. So we do down, down at the measure two. I, I number my music with a starting point as number one. Uh, so then here's the annoying thing. Make sure you shift in between the notes. Because sometimes it gets a little sloppy, you know? So make sure that while you're stopping the ball, and this is the full value, and that one is a chord, it's not a broken one. So then, so this pattern, ta, 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 it repeats many times. Uh, the key is not to use too much bow on the first note. At least, don't go beyond that, because if you went too far, what happens? And then we cannot do this stroke very well. Uh, so some, uh, you know, often people can do retake. I kind of like to so I'll bring it back the ball. And so on. Uh, I think the harmonic development is really cool. So the very beginning was this. Then went to... That's major three. Then major five. Of 10 right now. This one. this one definitely needs the softer wrist and little finger movement. Even though it says a trail, I think maybe putting more than one ta-da-da -da, may, may take too much time. 
if I try to do the I don't think it goes that well. So I'll do just one. You see? And then this has a little swell with a crescendo. That's measure 12. So this, uh, you see that how many uh, uh, both cross string crossings. Make sure that during the string crossings, it's smoother and uh, people don't notice that there's a string crossings. Also the timing, they'll go to the next string. So this needs just uh, attention about how to do the string crossings while when you do the swells. And then, uh, the tricky thing is the major 14. There's a piano written on a second, six tuplets notes. So, it's very hard to do. Anyway, so, and it, this has an accent. So, that's the, those are the only accents in this piece. So, hopefully, it, I mean, on a piano, in the piano. So hopefully it comes up beautifully. So then the music turn around and come back to the theme. Um, during this scale and ascending, so even though it's the same value notes, I like to. Uh, uh, elongate the bow and then the bow strokes see then I can successfully make the crescendo to forte and the trick is um, so don't run into the D immediately and it doesn't sound like a just beginning of the phrase so even that you, you don't want to go dun, 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 ding, dun, bum, ba, 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 ba. And the radio. It's like a, oh, now next. So there's a little time instead of it. You see that? So there's a poise. Right here, I feel like uh, there's a tick tock, tick tock, don't. So, um, like a major 17, when there are three quarter notes, ta, ta, t, then six toplets, ta, ta because the notes are so little, so it's very easy to just do. Oh no. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, it's very easy to go faster, but don't get faster. Make sure you're dun, dun. And measure 18, 19, the same. going into right in tune is very important and also uh, tempo da, da, just precise tempo okay and then uh, if you can try to vibrate a lot so each note try to vibrate as much as you can uh, fast one if you can um. So that shift is all
during the shift. It's often that we're so in a hurry to get to the notes, so it becomes like a make sure that you are uh, last note before the shift. Those are uh, played full value. So, and if you play full value when you shift, there's a slight time window of time. You can go now, now, now. Yeah. Anyway, so the third one didn't happen. Anyway. So, so you want to work very carefully where the shift is and if the sound doesn't sound choppy. So that's the way to go. I hope it, it makes sense. Now, um, I'll try the, the, other, uh, the other one. That's uh, Gustav Mahler's Symphony Number no. 1. Okay, I'm going to just make sure that the light doesn't get closed. Anyway, so this one, it looks very easy, right? It looks like um, not many notes. It looks like uh, so many of them are pianissimo. And uh, it says sempre pianissimo and poco ritardando. So it doesn't look very threatening. However, this is a piece that uh, even professional orchestra uh, put as an excerpt for an audition to select the members. So what does it tell you? It's really demanding piece, even though it doesn't look that difficult. So what, what are the difficult things? Um, maybe I'll play first and see what you think, okay? amazing piece of music. Um, you, you can imagine, you know, those are the violinists, the sea of violinists playing together to make this velvety sound and uh, the color. And that's just a little bit of a nuance of where the, the, the note direction goes. So this, uh, this is, uh,
If there was no direction, it could sound like this. Do you see the difference? So that there's a direction in the sound, as if the, those are the sunflowers going into the next um, next note, next phrase, next bar, and this continues. So how do we do that? First, you wanna have those um, image about where the notes are going, and also in the sound. With a vibrato, tiny bit of vibrato, and with a with a bow and a bow hair usage, you can bring the direction to it. And um, this piece uh, also the depends on the bowing uh, that you're doing. You have to save your bow at the places so that it doesn't get too stuck, and then we don't have a place to go. Uh, fingering is very important too. Um, we want to. For instance, I went up on this in the just because the color that uh, requires in this area is more like a covered sound with um, you know little tenderness. So you don't want to go to um, E string without that. Um, so make sure when you're playing this one. Uh, your intonation, um, what key is this? D flat major. Those are all making sense. Um, it's very hard to play all in tune, but especially when there are uh, shifts and stuff. But I think you can do that with a practice. And the tricky thing is that uh, the second line, when you go often music um, blocks some when the note goes up, but at this point, you don't want a crescendo. It's not the kind of style, it's more inward. And when you really feel elevated, then that's when you want to be more um, inside of yourself. So, so that's two before 17. You see the espressivo? So how do you make it? Uh, espressivo. So you could do a little more vibrato, or you could have a little more direction, more kind of coercive direction to it. However, it doesn't give you um, swell or um, crescendo markings, so you've got to be careful. Then the cool thing is the third bar of 17, <laughs> he gives us pianissimo. So, so be careful that uh, as a pair as you can while you still have a vibrato. So the bow is very much flow tone, uh, very much like a, a, by the fingerboard. Um, and this one I wrote uh, to two. Because that's the um, easiest one to go back and forth uh, on two strings. However, uh, it's critical that I don't want to sound like that's an E string all of a sudden. It's not like I don't like E strings, but uh, it's very uh, important.
the sound quality stays like you know you are playing one melody okay so but it says a espressivo so this is a tricky thing because um it when it's flow down though then we want to use a really fast bow but because it's two bars together so you can't really do that <laughs> so feel like a, you know so suppressed but it's okay because oh okay. Okay. so then to me this color changes This is a place to be very expressive outward. That's a second bar of 18. So that's that's where you see the molto espressivo. I think that's where you want to be a little more of pressure and have the little um, hope. But before that, this. Uh, you're just wanting to have something you can't get something you are going for something that kind of like hopeful sound the beginning of four bars before 18 then you here's the more dispersive one because the the sonority you get from the instrument and, and go you know we've been playing everything on a string and e string and right here we start having the d string so this Should do another four. Then that same position. Then go down. I know you've been practicing this for maybe about a week. Uh, I hope this uh, exercise or this um, tutorial would help you. Uh, I am from Shenandoah Conservatory in Winchester, Virginia. Please reach me at A Takayan. A T A K A Y A M at S U dot E D U. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach me. Good luck with your audition. <laughs>